This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. Yes, yes. Welcome back to the link up podcast with your host, Mr. King and Kana. What's going on, everybody? Yes, and today we have a very special guest in the building. Um, I don't know exactly the proper way to refer to this young man. I know him as Woods. <laughs> uh, like, that's how I've been told. But yeah, Woods you know, is the name. This, I don't know this, if that's the official... This one, you know, one of the campus homies, one of the crew, one of the, you know, part of the crew and stuff like that. You know, I'm going to leave him introduce himself because I don't know if you want us to throw out his government because, you know, this might be online and them kind of ones. You know, my name might. is a funny. Bye. <laughs> well, first of all, they know me as aka Woods, aka Mr. Bazaar Mental, aka. Oh God! There's a lot of AKAs. Why did you go down like Diddy man? <laughs> but, but, but usually they just call me Woods, or for for the ladies they call me Woodsy Pop. Uh, <laughs> okay then. I ain't going. I ain't going to go into far more detail with that. But okay then. <laughs> Well, um, sadly, we ain't got no ladies here. I mean, so I didn't think there's a need to go too deep into that. Yeah, so. ladies, pop that. That really. That, oh God, woo, woo, you should never tell me that, boy. Wait till we go back Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, but yeah, you know, what? Explain to the people a little bit. Where you doing? Where you from? Well, you want, how far back you want me to go? Oh God, oh because God. this story long. Though. I, but I forget who it is I'm talking to. Um, mm. what, what? Why you come up here? For, okay, where you from? First of all uh, Okay So If you have to look at it I was born in the Netherlands But mm-hmm. I grew up In the Caribbean mm-hmm. um, Aruba to be Specific um, Yeah how Other long, than that How long did you spend in Aruba? Well, uh, around like 17 age, years At what age did you go to um, Aruba from the Netherlands? Um, I was 4 years old okay. when, I, when I dipped From Coal Island No Cold, cold country, cold country to a hot cold, island. And that's an oxymoron. No, that, that, right. that a little, like, a cold island. A cold island. Well, um, I, I'm sure there's probably one or two cold islands out there. There's a lot yeah. of little small ja- islands. That I mean, Japan know. is a cold island. I mean, cold. An island is just a landmass surrounded by, by water. water yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't normally you don't normally correlate you don't normally like put Think of coal, coal and island, island together. You know, it's, no. it's not really something you hear the same outside of the Caribbean. That's yeah, but you know, yeah. whenever you hear island, you don't think of like the Caribbean. That's true. Or maybe it's just me. I, I don't know. But anyway, you're from Aruba? Yeah, I grew up in Aruba. Um, became a DJ around when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Before that, like my grandfather has a church. And I was I grew up around music a lot. So, okay. so that I was always wanted to song. sing, but that was not for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think so yeah. Uh, <laughs> in carnival you can sing because usually you don't have to have a good voice you just have to have like energy touche mm. so I used to sing in carnival too but again my voice was not appropriate for that either mm. even though you have to have energy but that voice was killing the energy um, after that I say you know what let me go dabble in this DJ thing I had a neighbor he was a DJ and he started to show me the ropes and thing and then eventually I got better than him shout <laughs> outs to Sean Ashton I just play him <laughs> Um, <laughs> I mean, that's what they Macho say. The, all the, kinds of shit. The student that like, exceeds the master and thing like that. No, but the man, the man showed me the ropes and thing. Um, so let's say from sixteen all the way to around twenty-two was like my blossoming year as a DJ. I uh, started working in radio in Aruba called Cool FM. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's how it. That's how it started with the old DJ thing. And so, how old were you when you had your first paid um, gig? Pump, yeah. Uh, yo. Um, around 16 too um, how much was it mm, um, the first gig was around 300 guilders in total 300 guilders Not so bad. if you have to convert that in euros it was like 150 some fuck like that yeah how long you play for I still play it but no but I mean like, like, like the, the first set oh, oh the set um, it hours. was uh, looking back at it I should have charged a little more <laughs> um, I played for 4 hours for our 16 year old 150 euros that ain't not bad no. yeah that's a good bit of money mm. but like how, you was playing often or like every weekend wow I, the, when I when I got into the radio like it was exposure for the club too no? so mm. it was like beneficial for the club to have me as a DJ because then when I working at the radio I would be promoting the party oh, you know? okay okay okay, okay. so yeah, they sense. were I was winning off of them and they were winning off of me it was a mutual exchange mm. So 
So what kind of music do you specialize in, DJ-wise? Any genres? Um, well, you know, in the Caribbean, especially in Aruba, um, it's so diverse with um, different cultures and people, so you don't really know what, what type of people you're going to get in the club, mm. especially in the club where I used to spin at. Um, so I had to, like, cover a bunch of genres. So when, I, when we're talking about playing in the Caribbean, mm. um, especially in Aruba, I had to know how to play everything. When it comes to, like, house to Latin to... Urban hip hop R and B. I house, had to house big in Aruba. Well, it used to be there. Were, there was this time period, especially around <coughs> 2010, 2011, mm. where urban started to die out and house started to take over. But that yeah. was it. Was it was that ADM period? It was like that period when even hip hop artists were mixing house with rap. Sebast- it was Sebastian never had that. We ever had like a uh, electronic or techno. I mean, it was always it's always there, but to say that it was surpassing urban music and stuff like that i well, feel like that even, never occurred but <clears throat> yeah anytime you go to a tantra whatever club it was you would hear at least at some point saggy Oof. wherever yeah. at some point in that you're going to hear some more of the edm and stuff yeah. like that for the international for the tourists and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. so like we used to it i mean but it just never was the main thing to me yeah that's yeah. why that thing i would i, I don't think know if there's is ever if ever was a time at least in our generation i guess least. probably in bliss back in the day that was probably the, the more edm club i guess from what yeah. i've heard i never i never went bliss but yeah. i went by i was at bliss a couple of times i ain't gonna lie it was cool it, it'd be cool especially especially because caucasians I, don't I, care I heard, I heard a lot of um illegal substances just used to go on in bliss that, that, that was yeah but i mean it's mm-hmm. martin where illegal substances wasn't consumed yeah but on a different level in bliss from what i've heard like yeah but that's that just because they happen to be more more, like more like more open. caucasian drugs and and that's <laughs> that's it was a caucasian club it wouldn't say it was like there was like sake which is like Every once in a while, you know, you have the locals there or Friday mm-hmm. and Saturday, you know, the locals going to show up or Tantra, you know, Thursdays and or Tuesday, two for Tuesdays, them mm-hmm. kind of ones, you know, them might be um, up in there. But anyway, um, so what are you doing up here now? <laughs> yeah, now I, I study in international communication and media mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. down there in Utrecht. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, other than that, other than studying, I also promoting um, my DJ career here in the Netherlands right now. And next to that, I'm also a producer. So I produce music videos, commercials, mm. stuff like that. Okay, so for what, what, what you do so far? Give us, give us a little something of what you do. Uh, well, Probably in terms so of nice. in terms of um, music videos and commercials and yeah. So when I came here, I came here around 2014, and I have a partner, mine, a good partner, mine. He's a director. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also from Aruba. And yeah, we just started working together and he knew, he knew this um, other director named Mike Static. And this director worked with like Acha, um, Ronnie Flex and all mm-hmm. these guys. Them. And we link up with him and we started making music videos with him in the beginning. And then, um, yeah, we, we, yeah, something happened. And me and Mario said, okay, you know what? We can technically do this ourselves. So we started doing this ourselves, doing a bunch of music videos. And last year we did like our biggest project was doing a commercial for Unilever. Oh, yeah. Um, and we had to record that for the branch in Africa, but in the Netherlands during winter time. So that was a little rough. Because you had to make it look like we were in Africa. What? What? So you do... Any, a, a, any particular country or just like Unilever Africa? Like that Yeah, we didn't know because it was for the African branch. So it was Unilever, like... You, I should have Like if Unilever Europe mm. and they just handle... True, true. The entirety of Europe, but saying, obviously they have sub branches that, mm-hmm. like, um, especially okay, Europe. Okay. Yeah. So, so they wanted <clears throat> you to do an African commercial in, in a, a European Dutch country, country. <laughs> during yeah. the winter. During, during the, the winter. winter. Yeah. Interesting. And what okay. would you say, like, it came out well? Like, you you found a way to do it, and like, how did you go about? Yeah. That? Like, so it's it, like that makes no kind of sense to me. Because <laughs> it, 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 it all depends, like on how you're doing it right because it doesn't mean you have to show like because you have the stereotypical mindset of africa you know like you just have to have a a bunch of trees like look making it look very tropical you know but before you go there okay what what was the concept of the video yeah okay so the concept was was, the concept was um (coughs) connecting Mm -hmm. so it it was for a launch for a product like axe you know the axe spray Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but the whole concept was connecting so you're walking down with with your girlfriend or on on the road or down the street mm. and you're like touching each other looking in each other's eyes you know like it's that's that connection mm-hmm. that you have and maybe um you're in a building with like your your girlfriend and her mother 
and yeah. there's like a bunch of interaction happening, but it's that connection. That was that was the whole point of the commercial. Between the girlfriend and the mother, and or it's just and... just just the vibe in general, like oh, okay. Okay. everybody connecting with one I think, another. I think I go in a little okay, bit was, too sexual with that thought. Was connection the slogan or like the motto of the product, or, or just the something team like itself. that, or was it? Like, it was it was it was the slogan of of the, the product's name. <laughs> no, no, no. It, the product's <laughs> name was not launched. It oh, was okay, okay. it was a teaser for the product. Ah. Uh-huh. So it was a commercial that you know is something's coming. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. But are you get that's something that you get paid for self or that was just like uh, uh something for it to like No 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 we got get paid. Name. With a corporation we as got paid. the size got paid. of Unilever, I would hope that yeah. they got I, I mean I don't know, it could've it could have it could have been something to do like, you know, they're using this as promotion or this because of this free one, Unilever will come to them with like a next one later on or mm. you know, you never know. You never know things can always be arranged. But yeah. at least I get paid for it, which is good. Yeah, usually usually how it works like with music videos, commercials, whatever, like they have a set budget, right? Um and how it works is you have a budget and then they tell you tell you, look, we have this um music or whatever this song, mm-hmm. we need a video for it. And then people start pitching. So it's not just one one group is pitching something, it's like multiple mm-hmm. people are pitching something and the one they like the most, that's the one they go with. But the thing is when you pitch in something you have to be realistic. Like, it has to be achievable with the budget that they have. You can go say, look, I have this and I have this, but if you want to do this, you need to put a little bit more on top of the budget. Is that achievable? If not, then we only can do this. So mm-hmm. that's that's usually how it works. But you need to keep in mind that when you're making a music video, you need to get paid. <laughs> so don't go make a music video, and then at the end, you ain't getting no money, but everybody would, else gets paid. I would hope so. So, so that's like, kind of back on, you was explaining the um, how you achieved it, how you... Um, replicated Africa and the Netherlands. Yeah, and how how like, I get that done? Uh, well, and, uh, did, did it actually happen? Were you able to do it? Yeah, um, I I I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the whole the whole thing is it just depends on how you take in the pictures, the angles, and if does it look believable? Like it's not even it doesn't even have to look like it's in Africa. It just has to have that vibe mm. of African people, you know. How, how um, are you gonna do that with, with winter jackets on? No, no, no. People were walking with shirts on in the cold, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. yeah. People, are, yo, the type of jugs people. No, but we have to pay, no, no, no. They got paid. Oh, like that. Oh, you mean paid actors? And yeah, for paid the actors. actors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, and they all had African background, so in, you know what I mean. It was genuinely that. African people. Are people of African descent? It was all black. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was not. It was not a Caucasian <laughs> production. <laughs> production. No, no, no. You know, it, it it legit looked the part. And you know, like especially in certain urban areas, like you know, like um behind NDSM where they have all mm. these um graffiti and things. Mm, like we all yeah. took some shots over there, so it looked looked pretty urban. I think it looked pretty cool. So it was yeah. more. It was the look was more for being urban, not necessarily African. No, 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 no. Because like that, there was that... a certain part of it. There were multiple commercial shot at the same time. Okay, but there was one part of the commercial that had that urban vibe to it as well. So it was it. You look at it, you would not think that we filmed it in Amsterdam. Let's say that. Okay, well, I mean that. So what well, with that concern? Where else with the back to the DJing? Where else you just play here in Amsterdam? You just play in Holland still? Or uh... yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of Holland, like right now, I'm still in the building phase. Like when you leave a country where you have a fan base, and then you come in to another country where no one knows who you are stand from scratch all and over then again. it's like it's like you're a baby growing up again you know like I have to build that fan base again and I would say that I'm building a fan base but I haven't reached to the degree that I once was in Aruba um, but yeah I played in Amsterdam I play in um, Den Haag uh, Rotterdam yeah you can name some of the clubs that you actually uh, in, specific in, places yeah in Den Haag I played in Club 7 and um Callisto mm. in Rotterdam. Callisto is the, the, the hookah lounge, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, in Rotterdam, boy, I don't even remember the name of the club anymore, dog. It's been I, I, I don't, know I don't go to Rotterdam that yeah, often. Yeah, Sorry I, for my Rotterdam people that I'm in, Aru- um, in Rotterdam from Aruba, but y'all got y'all gotta bring up a, a, a brother up there more. <laughs> uh, but usually, I think in Amsterdam mostly, but I throw parties here at the student campus. Hmm. And I think that's how I've been building up a fan base on campus. So let me just say this. Every time that we throw a party on campus, that's when the, the campus has the legit most the people coming. Yeah. But as, as somebody who lives on campus as well, it's kind of true. Hmm. 
Mm. Well, at least the, the little get-togethers I see, well, the parties I've been seeing from <clears throat> the last year I've been there. But is 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 definitely interesting. Something the parties that to be there. I've heard from what I've heard is they've been better, but it's just that because of management and all that kind of things, it's kind of mm. died down and stuff like that. But me personally, I see the man DJ, the man good. So anybody, if you see, I would recommend. You have any? Actually, speaking on that, you have any like mixtapes or anything out there that people could check and see what it was, how you're doing, check your craft itself. Instead well, of if they can't currently, catch you in the club. currently, um, I took them all down because I'm in the phase of a rebranding. Okay. Um, and something's coming out this month. So currently, you would say there's not really a web presence that you have in terms of like. If if people were to check any of your social media, they wouldn't see much of your past work and stuff like that. Or? No, if you go mm-hmm. on if you go on social media, you would you would see um, videos and imagery of my of me Previous doing my thing, yeah. And stuff. But um, in terms of product, I would say right now no. But that's because I took them all down. I needed to. I needed a rebranding, and I want to focus more on urban. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to have that old um, image of myself floating around because that's not who I. Want to be right now? <laughs> so um, it's not like you was a you was a woman beater and you come back from a whole wow. new thing or a crackhead and you come from a, you know you just come out to rehab and like <laughs> uh, I I I I have nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Justin Bieber had the roast, you know. I, yeah. I, I, he was acting out for all the mirrors. He was asking for forgiveness hey, and saying but you, but you know it's funny that whole Justin Bieber roast. Supposedly that was his entrance into the Illuminati. You ever heard a conspiracy? No. <laughs> No. Yeah, that's, that's I just find that was a little interesting. Okay. But anyway, mm. so apart from the whole DJ thing, one of the main reasons. Well, before um, that, I, oh, I, I, God, I, I yeah, wanted mm-hmm. to ask a question. I know you. I think you made me forget it now. Um, oh God, I'm so sorry. Not really, but you through. can cut it in post. Well, it's another question, but um, what do you prefer more, like the video editing types of stuff or DJ? That's, that's, uh, cool. that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. I think it's just in the moment. So when I'm when when I'm in a phase of creating, hmm. it doesn't really matter um, if it's audio or visual, and they both actually go hand in hand. Like you can't you can't make a video you can't make a video without audio, but they complement each other very hmm. well. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I I can't really say. I enjoy both, I, and I think that's why also I'm studying international communication and media right now i'm in a minor of (laughs) digital audio design Mm -hmm. so now it's more of making audio but it's in combination with visual i don't know i don't know i really don't know i can't choose one or the other i know what i hate go anything imagery just making things in photoshop Oh, like just right. editing pictures that's, I hear that that's king that's right. one of king specialties there self right <laughs> um <laughs> it, <laughs> look again sound of my heart okay let me know I, I don't say I hate it but it's it, it the, the, the the monopoly of it has Monotony? become the monopoly mm. of the the job has become a little a little I don't know I don't like the vibe I used to like it way more let me let me just say mm. that but I, I think I think it the, the, it's it's become more accessible for people, which is a good thing. But at the same time, because it's so accessible, same thing with DJing, like people don't value the the work that goes into it. Like now, you have like a lot of people ah, just okay. taking templates and from the internet, a lot of different little apps and things that kind of recreate similar effects or whatever that photo yeah. made. Uh, you had to actually have to know what you was doing to get that before no, it's just, time other. So no, like kind of like, like dulling down the skills. So like <clears> you don't really necessarily need to have. I mean, yeah it's, yeah, it's very similar to like what you say with DJs and stuff. Whereas like before, it used to be people with um carrying crates and stuff. Like you would hear all the DJs talking, but I know it's like everybody's got serato or whatever, and they feel that like they popping or something. For, like before yeah, there was a lot more investment to show like okay do you really want to do this are you really mm-hmm. invested in it like y- you wouldn't be just be carrying around a box full of crates of vinyls and stuff <laughs> like that in the time when that was how they was DJing and stuff went like the early beginnings of hip hop and stuff type mm-hmm. of vibe like like I, I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing I'm just saying um I can't it, even it's become that. it's yeah it, it's be- it, it has become too easy which means that it's more accessible which is a good thing but at the same time because it's so accessible some people just don't look at the past and 
don't study the craft like you can't but then, but then you can't you, say you're you're into like you're into something but you then you don't look at the history and see how it started but then that ain't kind of that is not kind of a good thing for people like you for instance you and king who have that experience and y'all could show okay yo you know i just no regular asshole here doing but this I, thing i actually have this proficiency i can do this i can do that you know no. it kind of sets you apart from everybody yeah, else yeah and then that that that's a good thing but i'm just saying like in, in terms of like just globally like mm-hmm. it makes it makes the image of being a dj i see i see it kind of watered down the whole like because now if you see a it's picture everybody could think like, like yeah it's rap. photoshop it's the same thing with rap in some ways like you hear very similar discussions with the introduction of the internet and stuff like that the decentralization democratization of power there's no gatekeepers necessarily everybody can be a rapper because you get a soundcloud for free you upload some music you technically a rapper and stuff and that's why you're seeing there's so many people and people feeling because like the like you were saying the barrier to entry is now so low because mm-hmm. i mean i i fall under that same category because i and i would not have been making music 10, 15 years ago if equipment was still at the prices that they yeah. used to be yeah. and the internet wasn't there to allow me to learn how to record and mix and master and make beats and all of these type of things. So I am in that same category of people that only getting into music are uh, a big part of the reason to get into music is because the barrier to entry was so low, the price of equipment come down, the internet allow you to just YouTube anything and learn it and stuff like that. No, but that, that <clears throat> that's still a little different though. Like there is still not a button that you can press and it will put all of the equip, all the things together for you nicely. So you just press a button and say, "No, I want this and this and this to happen," and the computer makes the song for you. I hear what you say. But saying. when you That's have true. when you have an equipment that takes your BPM and makes sure that everything is always on level, then you just have to keep turning levers mm-hmm. and thing and making some effects. I like I ain't, I ain't seeing. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. I understand exactly where you're coming from. But but again, I'm not hating. So some people still like maybe they lack in that, but then they have the skill of music selection and they still pop in. Hey, they, may, maybe know? they got different. They got different because levels. In my for opinion, everybody. I am like I will always say I am like the hottest YouTube DJ ever. Like all I need is <laughs> Google, you say, Google Chrome. <laughs> A reasonably decent computer that can handle having multiple tabs open and yeah. stuff like that, and it's slowing three, down. You need, you yeah. need a lot. You I need just just like three, three tabs, three and tabs. yo, I killing it. <laughs> and then add blocker. Make sure I have add blocker because me want to ask before we're playing the videos and things. Like I've done this at multiple when we got nothing, but I, I've done that at a few parties too. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I think I think one of Peanut own self we was, we was YouTube DJs for a while. I think me yeah. and you probably yeah. switching yeah. self. <laughs> me and you switching. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would I would say the 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 biggest the biggest thing to be in the DJ is the music selection because a lot of people in the crowds don't even care what you're doing with the decks. It's all about honestly. That's one music. thing. Yeah. That's one thing that I definitely notice here, and I hate it. The fact that there's so many DJs that cannot play that have no idea how to mix a record that like they stop one song and play the next song. I'm like, but and in the club all the time. But what is you doing behind? Like that's not in my opinion. To me, that's not what the DJ is supposed to do. Like you're supposed to find how I grew up hearing music, going to clubs and think most of the DJs in places they know. Okay, this beat and find another similar BPM song or whatever. Yeah, match see- it up. Find the chorus or I drop it on the chorus no. or I find an interesting way to blend the two songs in you some just way say and then start there, you just say like, something there that, that kind of I think kind of goes with it you say back in our days growing, growing up don't forget these people who now in the clubs I mean okay cool we still young we, we decently young but they're going to have people there that's like 18, 19, 20 like how they grow up and listen to music is, I would say, almost completely yeah, different to how still, we do to it. To me, now. if you're a DJ, to me, if you calling yourself a DJ, one of the basic requirements, in my opinion, yes, song selection is important. I agree, but to me, you're supposed to mix because what is the difference yeah, between me having I you up there playing? I, I might as well have a playlist. If you can't even mix the songs, if create an interesting transition between the two songs. What's the difference between you and the playlist? I could have select great songs and just have them play one right after the other if you even given me that. Yeah. Like, they're <laughs> supposed to keep the party popping, see, like, recognize, like, okay, you know, the crowd doesn't seem to be feeling this song. Let me switch it and then mm-hmm. well, find something to get back the energy in the place, get the energy back up and stuff. Like that, That's the thing, but from what, from what I've been seeing, just maybe it's just me personally, or maybe it's the places I've been going to itself, but... They don't really focus much on the transition between songs. No. It's more it's more like, okay, cool. It's like all right, we are we are on this hip hop R and B thing, cool. We'll stay on this hip hop R and B thing. Or we or if we are on mm. uh, this techno and house thing, we'll stay on this for a little while and then maybe find a song to transition mm. in there. But when it comes to the actual like 
Mm -hmm. In between, between songs. My, it's, it's, I, there's no, there's, there's no, to me, there's no care for it no more, Jai. Mm -hmm. Or there's no attention to detail with that kind of stuff. And I always say, is, is how we listen to it and how, like, we grow up the ending of like scratching and them kind of ones. Mm -hmm. So like it ah. wasn't it wasn't even when even when we come up it was it was dying down, Jack. So like, a DJ old cat. Yeah, hey, <laughs> shout out on me. So like even yeah. with that is like we we didn't even even us who didn't ex um experience the the I guess the the peak of it. I mean, I remember my question now. We <laughs> 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 we can't really expect the younger ones to think it either, you check. And what was your question? My question was, you were saying that you want you going through a rebranding um, period and stuff. Yeah. And you want to go more in an urban direction. And my question is, why <coughs> do you feel the need to rebrand? And like you say, you was kind of um, just a specialized in everything. Or you know a little bit of everything yeah. in the Caribbean. Like why specifically would you want, do you want to more focus on urban music? Um, Because I love urban music more. I have more passion for it. Mm -hmm. um, um, back then it was more a necessity uh -huh, to play okay, everything okay. I still listen to everything but when it comes to spinning on the decks mm. I love playing urban music more and keep in mind when, I, when I'm talking about urban music I mean I was just gonna urban ask. music but it, it involves hip hop R&B Reggaeton. I was just gonna ask. Oh, Dancehall. Oh, you know, you like turn it's still, it's still, it's still a genre. It's, 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 it's a broad genre. So I'm not just Umbrella mixing. Term. Yeah, I'm not just mixing hip hop or R and B. No, I'm, I'm. It's still a most, very broad. Most black music, basically. Yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. what it sounds like. Most black ask, music. What are you really considering as urban? So Afro beats and all yeah, that mixed yeah. in, like most black music. Yo, when last are you here, Zook Chat? By yesterday. Wow. <laughs> I don't was think it. that was the answer you no, that, <laughs> that was it. That was it. Really, was bad to go with it, but okay, okay. Well, let me rephrase that. There. Well, last year, Zook in a club. Um, uh, last year. My why you was lucky? Where that's you another thing um, I don't like about here. The, the specificness of the parties. My, yeah, your little faggot. I mean, your little punk. That's why you went mm. and 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 you think I know oh, you mm. went and you didn't leave us no. But you know how many times I say let's My go bull, summer breeze. Bullshit. My working. Bullshit. I can't go. I can't go half work, but okay. Yeah, it look right. My hat to work. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hat to Don't work. go say I nobody, invite you. Nobody ain't paid me there by summer breeze. That's the most <laughs> Caribbean party you gonna find. Mm. Like in terms of music, like no nah, man, that ain't true, man. No, no. Let, let me let me rephrase that. Like, it, if you grew up in like in Aruba, Saint Martin, Curacao, Bonaire, like you're accustomed to li to listening like Latin music, mm. urban music, yeah. like I mean, all over the all I over feel the place. Like Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, they a little more. Right, like, yeah, like, right. y'all a little more yeah. on the Latin yeah, stuff yeah. than us. A lot and some, more on the like, Latin stuff. Latin saber, um, Stacia, like we a little more similar so, culturally. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, more similar, similar culturally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's true for sure but uh, summer breeze like we're gonna we're gonna throw some free promotion in right now like legit you stand outside they have salsa bachata merengue you it's go sure inside by. dance hall hip hop sure R&B yeah. soca but. you go upstairs zook I ain't, even, I ain't even make it upstairs to show you but there's there's like <laughs> it was a good mix of it's a good mix yeah it's, you feel like you're in the Caribbean dog and more, home, most and Caribbean people go there yeah wow. and it's free that's, true, that's, true, that's true. the most enticing part of the whole thing it's free I think free. everybody just become interested who wants to say that free word now right. but no but yeah. You were saying you was king. You were saying that that's one of the things you don't like about up here. The, 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 the specificness yeah. of the parties, like, but yeah, <clears throat> is like I mean, okay. Most of the time up here is like okay. Tonight is a dance hall night. Tonight is a soccer night. Tonight you really you have might to get look a dance hall versus soccer night. Yeah. Today is a Latin night. Like yeah. the way that is like you. This is the music that you're hearing tonight. Is no okay. Some hip hop, some dance hall. You do have that in places. I mean, I can't say there's none of it, but. It's not like everywhere on Samaritan was like every club I've went to on Samaritan. I mean, we used to go to mostly like we. I was gonna say well, <laughs> it, it wasn't all that. It, it wasn't like all that diverse. <laughs> it wasn't all that diverse. I, I <laughs> in general, but, there's like three clubs, <laughs> and in total, we go to like two. <laughs> Either way, we got. I understand what you say, but there was numerous DJs. There was numerous DJs that played in those two yeah, clubs but on but multiple but different nights, take and, and so they all understand the necessity and the ability to play a little bit of everything. They gonna play some. Some but people got focuses. I mean, we know some people who's like, okay, use a dance hall DJ, exactly, or use a this exactly. DJ. But still, 
in my opinion, to me, there was a lot more variety going out on Simon than there is here. You know, like you can expect to hear, okay, there's going to be yeah, a little but, bit of everything. But you don't think that's you don't think that's more because you could expect the same amount of crowd, the same crowd all the time. I mean, like it's Martin. I mean, okay, cool. You might have a little tourist here and there, but me, mm-hmm. other than that, you know what you're going to expect. You know who the type of people you're coming inside. Here's somewhere in bigger place like Amsterdam, for example, like. You can't have just to a me, hip-hop club to me, no that, more. to me, that's exactly the reason why you should be more like that. Because, like, you kind of making my point for me, in my opinion. Like, what do you mean? The fact that it's going to be so diverse, that's why you play a diverse array No, but music. I'm saying it's not going to be diverse. Because you know, you know it's the same people that come in every week. Uh, well, it, yeah. What, you, like, you arguing something different than what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like I'm we, talking we, about on St. Martin, <laughs> yeah. it's very diverse. Mm. Yeah. And I don't understand how the fact that it's the same people means play diverse music. To me, it's like if you're in Holland, if you're in a bigger country where there might be all kinds of people from you know, mm. even nowhere and thing. To me, that's even more reason as to why you should play a diverse array of music and play okay, yeah. a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, little, yeah. Because we're going to have people in there from all over the world. Mm. So that's, to me, it doesn't make sense. And St. Martin, I can understand, okay, we only going okay, to play okay, yeah, yeah, hip hop or we only that. going to play this car. We yeah. know it's a majority black country. The most people they listen to soca, dance hall, rap, like those I would say is probably the most listened to genres on St. Martin, I think. But yes. I would <laughs> like soca, yeah. dance hall, rap. Yeah. What but, else? Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, some I mean, Latin so, music and stuff. So yeah, I could yeah, understand yeah. I could understand like for, for certain people why they would want to have like just one genre. At least they know what they're getting themselves into. Mm-hmm. Um but when we're talking about Amsterdam, easier, I guess it's easier to market. I think that's yeah. probably but no, the reason. But not only that, not like, only that either is. I mean, I think that is one of the main things. But I mean, look, um, I don't know if I ever, I don't know if you ever check it. Woods, um, they used to have a club in in on Rembrandt Plain, like at least six years ago, called Club mm-hmm. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about it. Club yeah. Home, yo, that was my spot. I, like, I, the man used to run, the man used to run that. dance hall. Even Saint Martin never used to run, but <laughs> so like that was my pleasure. And all of a sudden, the man just shut down. Why? Because they didn't have enough traffic. Because there was primarily and mainly a hip hop dance hall R and B type something. Mm. And especially up here in Amsterdam, that just ain't gonna fly. Mm. May, so maybe maybe it's necessary to why? do with more than the location. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think it's that that why? was the problem. Six why, years, what, six years ago for sure. Why encore popping? And there's more there's more clubs like cause it's DNA and stuff that's known like a yeah, African but, but that's what that's what I'm saying. Six, six, years, six years, years ago, yeah. But now you don't forget only now really. Okay, mm-hmm. when I say now, I mean like in the last like maybe four years, four or five years, it been got it up like that. When we man just come up, it was um, Europe and Amsterdam was still strictly on this. EDM techno house thing you know right. I think well, from my, my opinion at least shout, from how I was seen and I went out a lot shout out shout then. out to Wax Fiend. Um, I think this <laughs> man when this man thing, like how is Encore from yeah, but don't when Jam Encore Rock only no, sat five years ago no? yeah. yeah but Jam Rock older than Encore yeah Jam Rock older than Encore but that was, so the, only, that think, was the only one place no? was I, only think, one place. I think Jam Rock Brazil, I think Jam Rock is what was the downfall of the club that you were talking about because maybe they, could be. they when they could came, be, they be. took the crowd from could them. Be. And Jam Rock had this this vibe and presence. Could by could you, you possibly could be right? But at the same time, I wasn't really because it was my first. I, w- I was going club home when I was my first year up here, mm-hmm. so I didn't really know much about Jam Rock and them kind of man. Then you know them. It wasn't too experience in all the Dutch yeah, party no, atmosphere I was, and culture. I, I, was and I mean, no, I, I had no the party scene because mm-hmm. I was in a I was, you know it was an international study. My, my my flat was right there close to the metros, and then these man, the True. international all the international dorms had to pass <coughs> my house in order to reach the metro. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was. I was a lot, out a lot but I was going everywhere we were, I went a lot of places and um, all that only that one place had hip hop and R&B mm. back then and I went out a lot in Amsterdam mm. but, but so that's why I say only now only in the past like 3-4 years 3 maybe not even 3-4 2-3 years hip hop really like inside the club self mm. I find at least or maybe or I might know, you especially know, you would you know what, you know I, think, you know what I think it is like we can't we can't really say going back to the club you were talking about we can't really say what was going on financially with them. Maybe they were they were actually that running too. good, but there was maybe bad management involved. That it too. could have been there's there's multiple multiple reasons why that well, could have happened. So. Every Thursdays was definitely good. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know about the rest of the week, but <laughs> Thursdays was a very good day in that club. So I I not know, but now like that I think is a key part in encore success. No, it's one night. 
Saturdays. Yeah, but exactly that's the thing. Encore is one part, you know. Yeah, it's not the yeah. yeah, it's not necessarily a Melkway. Yeah. Like, Mel- because Melkway and they just do all kinds of stuff inside. I just have to remember that sometimes because I don't have to be. And if, like Melquick is the club and Encore is just the party because Melquick itself got they got techno chooses and all mm-hmm. that kind of they got a whole bunch of different things, but Encore itself, I even that like I was saying before, Encore itself is only five or five years. The Encore is legit five years. So like mm-hmm. when I was really talking, when I was really going out like that, well my first year, they didn't really have a presence presence like that nowhere. And consistently packed like every week or every time I ever am to go encore. Like, but I have rarely ever seen them not having a line at encore. Or okay, no, I've 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 seen a couple of nights where encore is a little empty, but it was still like the dance floor was still packed. Put it mm-hmm. that way. When when we mean pack, we when you t- I, I assume when you encore mean pack, you mean reasonably like sized place all and like, like the, the, the you know like the Saint mm-hmm. corner, like we would yeah. call it. You know, all that area is covered. <laughs> Close by, up I mean, on the wall, typical yeah. Saint <laughs> <Saint-Martin. laughs> <Saint-Martin. laughs> <Saint-Martin. laughs> Typical. But then when I mean when I mean pack, I mean like, it was just a dance floor. Like the rest of the mm-hmm. like the steps in the back and like around the sides was a, was free. You could like you could do cartwheels and backflips and all kind of thing. But dance floor was still reasonable. You could see it had people. True. So I I've seen some nights where it wasn't as thing, but. Encore, I I think Encore started it. That's what I think. I think Encore started the more hip hop R and B vibe in Amsterdam. Mm. Well, I mean, be- and arguably <clears throat> in Holland. I don't think there was a specialized hip hop club or night or something no. like that where you consistently find like especially just not hip hop. Yeah. Nah, especially not consistently. Not I know like that Uncle. like there was more urban music parties or whatever you could go and you would hear some hip hop yeah, if like you go into a, da- a soca verse dance hall or something or one of those type of things. Even a jam rock sometimes it would hear certain hip hop certain like mm-hmm. not the majority of the night or nothing, but you would hear it now and then. But I feel like Encore was the first thing that was like purely the whole night. We yeah. focusing on hip hop slash a little R and B type of vibe. I think right, I think so as well. And then, like I said, that's why I think that's one of the reasons why I'm Probably if you had some people think, that live here that was like from the Netherlands, like just was, you know, Dutch um, hip hop fans and stuff that was more familiar with the hip hop scene, they probably could right. tell I us feel how like wrong people we are. in the comment section like, yo, no, that ain't true. That yeah. <laughs> we went to this party in this place, though, but you know. If only we had, yeah. only <laughs> we had an audience like that. I wasn't, I wasn't going to say that, right? <laughs> I'm not trying. I'm not trying to deter any <laughs> listeners from commenting. If you feel like it, please do so. We appreciate the comments. But I'm just saying, based on our history, is not to say that we have that that active of an audience. Yeah, we 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 have a lot of ghost listeners. Like we we, we value the one comment that we just get every like three videos. Yo, every every criticism, every comment, everything yeah. is is highly appreciated and very much you know. Um, encouraged, but yeah, it ain't we mean like that yet, not yet at least. But back to the interview a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what would be um some of your future plans for the DJ and uh like once you finish your study, how do you see um mm. combining everything or yeah? What would you um, like to do? Um, when it, uh, professionally wise, like I would just want to encompass like my studies with my music, um. I would love to keep making commercials also. Mm. Um, but when it comes to like what I want to do in the future, like my the branding that I was talking about um, mm. half an hour ago, um, that encompasses all that. So my, my branding also is going to incorporate my new lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So all that is going to fall under that one brand. Okay, and for those who may not know, <clears throat> like what will be different with the new lifestyle compared to the old lifestyle? So... Um, Last year, I decided to go fully vegan, mm-hmm. um, and that is part of my <clears throat> lifestyle, let's say, and I want to promote that. Um, so you've been fully vegan for a year now? Yeah. And that's like no backsliding, no, no nothing, slip-ups, nothing, no, nothing, meat, no meat, no nothing, no cravings, yeah. nothing, nothing. Yeah, man, man. Okay. Like, as much as we trip on him, he, he really been sticking, so, sticking to this thing. So you just... Uh, um, uh, food a dietary vegan or more lifestyle in in the sense of you no letter and stuff no like letter, that no well. letter nothing you know you know the thing is um in the beginning when i started it was very much just for health reasons you know i wanted to be more healthy um um Let's and go did back. You, we did have to you, go did back. Did you go vegan right away, or did you? Was there like you know you start vegetarian, see how that work out, and then you know kind of. I I I'm, I'm a weird vegan. I started off with just cutting off milk products, so just mm. milk. 
So I no cheese. Yeah. No milk. So I went with the hardest thing because mostly when you when you talk with people that want to go vegan or something, the first cheese. sentence you hear is, I, "I can stop eating meat and I can stop drinking milk, but I can't stop." Eating that cheese. Um, yeah, it kind of cuts out all pastas, pizzas, and like. No, but that's that's not true, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, right. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But um, how, how yeah. you actually start? So, um, we have to go back a little bit. So I was, I always had asthma as a child. Hmm. I've seen the, the hospital so many times. I don't, want, I even want to talk about it. Hmm. Um, but these doctors always told me, yeah, just. Um, take this medicine, you know, when you feel something, just puff it, you know, and your symptoms will go, not go away, but it will subside. Um, yeah, like, Did when you think subside? about it, that that is that that is just um, the but argument you will always hear, like, you have diabetes, yeah, just take this pill, it will manage it. Putting a plaster on it instead yeah. of treating the root cause. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I I wanted to change. Um, I went la- two years ago. I had this big attack um, hmm. in Bloomingdale at, at the beach, and I was just fed up, man. I was like, "Yo, I need to change something. I don't want this to happen again." Like, I was. It was also affecting me mentally. I couldn't work good because I'm always um, short of breath, hmm. even in the gym. While I was muscular, I was still struggling, like hmm. just to <clears throat> keep up with pace and thing. I was always weaving everything. I was like, "No, no, this has to change." But I didn't know what the fuck I needed to do to change my situation. So, during that same time period, I went to the doctor and luckily, I ain't, I ain't really tell this story yet, but lucky, luckily this man was vegan. Mm-hmm. And he told me, look, um, I can give you some prescriptions, but to be honest with you, just, just try this, cut off milk, and see how that going to affect <clears throat> your health. Um, I didn't follow that. <laughs> so he told me, he told me that, but I didn't follow it like for like six, seven months. Hmm. And what then changed? I got an attack again. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, no, nah, what? Catch yourself, do something. <clears throat> so by the next day, I just cut off milk like that hmm. in two weeks. Switch to almond milk. Or yeah. yeah. <clears throat> almond milk. I didn't, I didn't eat no chocolate products. You know, the thing is, chocolate was also my weakness. Milk chocolate. Hmm. I used to eat Snickers every day. See, that's another reason I can't. I, I know. <coughs> yeah, for not, me, not, not, not I can't, but I won't go vegan. That ain't even a problem for me. Like, chocolate. That's a problem. Chocolate don't bother. Chocolate was my, my, pro- my Achilles that's a, that's a, heel. Chocolate a, and cheese was my Achilles very heel. Big. Cheese for me is real sweet. I mean, you can ask Woods. I like, much rather prefer eating some Pringles or whatever than sweets. Like, sweets no, just... I, I used to go to the dentist a lot growing up. Like, I, I still do. <clears> okay? Mean, them Hershey's cookies and cream? I, I can't do it. You mu- yo, it, almost every day in my yeah. room, you must find at least three wrappers. After having things. braces, the amount of time, like, for, during the period of me having braces, as a, like, for the three years or however long it was, the when amount that I saw, person? this was... I think probably from when I was twelve or so, oh, like okay, first then, one, I wasn't really like having really. one to three or something or something, maybe some, something like that. I had braces, and okay, I had it too. But I don't remember you having it. From that period of time, being the moment that I used to be in the dentist and stuff like that, I'm like, you know what? I ain't trying to do this. I ain't need to be seeing the dentist. Like, I mean, I still go to the dentist up here. I went a while without going to the dentist. Mm. I ain't like just because of, yeah. Like, I don't know, I just put it off because it was like nothing was wrong with teeth. I had no issues and things. Yeah. I was like, you know, I need to go for a cleaning thing. It's been I, some time and stuff. So like I'm not gonna lie, my I kinda need to step up on my um teeth care because I mean yeah. supposedly I eat like twice a year, that's no, like the but, recommended amount of the time. <coughs> at least if you go in every six months. months. The amount of sugar this man eats. <laughs> no but it's is 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 it's bad sometimes, but it's it's um, really bad sometimes. Yeah, we, but, yeah, we got off track. Yeah. So. Well yeah, um so I cut off milk. And in the first two weeks, <coughs> like I started noticing already a big difference. In two weeks, just cutting off every milk product. But we're not just talking about cheese, chocolate. Like you, you would be shocked when you actually read behind the ingredients and see what all of the stuff that we eat that has milk in it. That you would even look at yourself and pause. Like, why does this have milk in it? No, like. Uh- I, I kind of go into that period now because my significant other she doesn't she doesn't eat any milk at all and stuff like that. So because of that, like 
it has me checking the ingredients on products all the time. It's like, if I buy this and it ain't, no, if only I could eat it and think, then it's like, this away some money or whatever yeah. and thing. Yeah. And just like, I've never ordered from Domino's. I never seen a pizza without cheese until recently. Like, it's the weirdest <laughs> thing ever. Like, but it is good. I, like, I see that like recently Domino's also, pizza, actually. Like, it is it's an interesting thing. But, it, but yeah, it's um, do, it's do, it's do pizza sauce and, and vegetables. I yeah. don't understand it. But what, anyway. what, what what was the change? What, what would you say was the change that you noticed after cutting on the milk? What, what um, was the, you said you the, felt better, yeah, than, but the, what the, was different? The immediate change I would say in under a month was me being able to breed better. Hmm. I've never been able to breed the way I'm breeding now. Hmm. Usually, when I people know me as the guy that always sounds congested, that was just a fact. I always sound like sick. Yeah. <laughs> Always when people ask me, oh, you have a cold? You know, that was just something that always mm. people would ask me. Um, after that... That actually makes sense, though. Okay, I know, like, people associate <laughs> milk and stuff like that. It's a very mucus... Like, there's a lot of... I forget, I don't know the proper way to explain it, but milk in general, it's a very mucusy or mucus-forming type of thing. And mm-hmm. to be being congested is all that like the mucus. Mm, mucus sinus issues I don't, I don't know me recently i i recently tried um switch over i think i said this last week or a couple of weeks ago i recently started doing this almond milk thing i've been on almond milk like so i yeah. only only like the past two weeks i really start being almond on milk this tastes and, weird to me now like, yeah and I, I don't think i don't think i would be able to drink normal milk like, I, don't know. I, mean, I thought the, i thought the almond milk would actually taste a little funny but nah. i if, like if you didn't tell me it's about very if it's almond, yeah, yeah if you didn't tell me you about know, almond milk, it if you ever had um Hundred percent skim skimmed milk? No, because I think that sounded a little funny to me, so I judged it. I judged it just by the name, so I was like, I ain't messing so, with that. Back in the days, like my grandmother always um, drank like whole milk, and at a certain point, I wasn't going to my grandmother's house anymore, and my mom used to just buy like skim milk. Mm. So I used to drink skim milk with my cornflakes. I never liked drinking pure milk, like that was not something that I do, but. With, with my cornflakes, it would throw milk in it. Okay, wait, quick question, quick question on the cornflakes thing. Which one first? Yeah, which one first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. how, how did I know you was going in that direction? It, it, de- it depends. It depends. The milk or the cereal? It depends on what cornflakes you eat in. If it's with hot milk, then you put hot, in the milk I've first. Heard, heard these you put the milk before. first and then the cornflakes. Why? Because the hot milk makes the cornflakes soggy fast. But then the, the, the milk don't make the so- the, the cornflakes fa- I mean soggy fast. Either yeah, way. No, no, no. But you have to yes, heat and liquid. Yeah. With that, like it's not just. Okay. It's you not have just, to like eat okay, it and fast then, and, and then throw some more and then eat it fast so it's not to go. But when it's cold, that's too much. But when it's cold, when it's cold, then you put cornflakes and then milk. Yeah, you should put cornflakes first in the milk. When it's cool, it's supposed, when it's cool. It's okay, supposed to be okay. cornflakes and then milk are you, all the time. Are you, are you weird? But with, with the hot, <laughs> the hot one, like, you, like <laughs> I prefer <laughs> it, but it becomes too soggy. I don't I'm want my exactly. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but me, with cold, with cold, me, I never do. I never do the hot milk. Uh, it's like hot used, milk was something in my childhood. Milk. I used to do, yeah, yeah. Like, hot used, milk yeah. was a childhood something yeah. thing. I haven't done that in I don't know how many years. At least a decade. Like, I was only to wait for it. It was only with needle milk. Needle milk. That was the only milk I would do the hot thing, like the powder milk from back in the day like that type of stuff but to me it's only logical to put cereal first otherwise you're wasting milk because like you cannot accurately measure the amount of no. if you put milk first and then cereal <coughs> like what, what happens because, that one time when you, you put, don't have enough milk then you got like but exactly but that's a but that's the problem you check how much check milk, how much you, milk have, you have you pour the cereal and then you pour the milk no, on top so it's properly covered. But then you wasted the cereal because you don't know how much no, milk you have. You never, you never wasted the cereal. <laughs> but you never waste the like, milk, you know? Are you five? Like, are but, you not, you not going to finish your cereal? But, like, but how you waste the milk then? I've never had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I have a question then. How you waste the milk if you put the milk? Okay, let me explain my logic with it then. I put, I don't put the milk first because then it is, to me, that is gauge how much I'm really going to eat. Or how much, how much, I, how much cereal I going to eat? Because I, alright, cool. I have this amount of milk. I want this amount of cereal to like balance it. Then cool. I know how much I think it. I, I have an important question. For you. How many times? Factor, how many though? times but have the you? Cereal is the key thing you're trying to eat, so you measure around that to me. How, like, how many times have you finished eating cornflakes and you still had some milk in your in your bowl? Never. Never. No, because but. I just, I just, I just 
do try you to drink, ratio. Do you I don't, drink no, the rest? No, I don't ratio out when I eat it. So like, if I see that my, my cereal to milk ratio kind of going down, you add more. no, I just drink no more. I just drink a oh, little okay, bit more okay. milk and then try to leave out some cereal when I drink. You know, when I get to the spoonful, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I just try to balance it out. Equal cereal and milk ratio in every spoon. So no, I, I, I added my, my cereal first. If I see that the we cereal see, done it, but that's why I always I added add a bunch more of cereal. cereal. No, we see that's too much. I want, I, I want to do one. I just want to prepare it once and that's it. I don't want I, this thing about adding more milk after or adding more cereal after. Okay, no, to me too, it's just okay, like yeah. which which conflict which conflicts did you usually eat? I think that's very that's a very important. By, but I had a plethora of them. It yeah. was everything from like corn pops to apple jacks. For some flakes. of them become. More soggy or faster than the other. Um, yeah. Smacks. Like, that's that is true too. Like if you had a ham, what too. was it? Um, Rice Krispies. Them things don't last. No, no. Uh, fruity <laughs> Pebbles. Fruity <laughs> Pebbles. It looks like <laughs> soup in like three seconds. Like, yeah, you have to really watch out. Like the cinnamon pop, ones. Corn, those corn those corn last long. Last, yeah. Corn pops the, used to last a little long. I think that was yeah. probably like the amount of of of, of chemicals it take. Was but it? They had, they, had, but. they had frosted flakes, and then you had the cinnamon version of that, and they they were selling it. You ever you ever look at corn pops though? Realize how shiny it was. It's because it was laminated. Dog. Oh, that's yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, but, that's why they take so long. It was exactly, water resistant. I was just gonna say we wasn't looking at that when we was kids. Yeah. All no, like cinnamon just, toast crunch. Yo, cinnamon toast crunch to me oh. was the best cereal. Cinnamon toast crunch. That cap no. It was um, cinnamon toast Reese's. Waffle yo. crisp. Dog. Waffle crisp was good shit. That too. was a good one too. I ain't gonna lie. But from time Reese's come out with a cereal, that was it. I've never cinnamon had that toast, one. Cinnamon to me, toast that, crunch. That, that was cinnamon that was toast was my shit too. That was apple jacks was cool too. Yeah. Smacks was cool. Was cool no, I didn't like Apple Jacks, boy. There was there was false it. advertisement. I like Smacks. Smacks is one I was, of my I was ones. waiting for that Apple taste. <laughs> <laughs> Never came, boy. 2018 Man. still don't taste like Apple. Boy. <laughs> 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 false advertisement. I'm still upset with Kellogg's. Right, no, man. What else? There was there was compact Frosted Flakes, Apple Jacks, Pretty Pebbles. You know which one was go to? The one from Scooby Doo, dog. Scooby-Doo mm-hmm. had cereal? Yeah, no, man. They partnered part, part, up with, 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 with marshmallows. Yeah, boy. Nah, they, they probably partnered up with, fruity, with um, Fruit Loops or something like that. Mm-hmm. I, don't think, I don't think they had their own specific. No, no, I mean it was branded with Scooby-Doo, yeah, but yeah, it was it made was, by Kellogg's was, or something. But nah, I never see that one. Well, well, boy, that was addicting, they had one more. They had one more man used to always have. Um, honey Bunches of Oats. I ever had that? Yeah, I had it. Yeah, it was okay, yeah. depending on what flavor. It I mean, they good. had different ones. Yeah, they had the honey, they had one with extra nuts. Like, what, strawberries or yeah, something, yeah, anything, yeah. things like that. But to be honest with you, the, the one I ate the most, which is sad to say, just the original regular conflict. Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. I have to have a lot of sugar in my. But, yeah. the, but that's in my yeah. Mind. Everybody but that's knows that's thing. how you eat conflicts. Like, if sugar? you like hot conflicts, the that, that's when I used to eat conflicts. Yeah. Like, but I used to do it, the same thing. Yeah, can you feel like the a needle milk? At least the powder milk used to give the conflicts a little more flavor than like those regular milk. And then, like, I just used to drink two percent milk. I was never, I wasn't a skim milk person. I don't, I don't know. Whatever milk my mother had in the fridge is what I used to drink. I never really used to watch them kind of. It was two percent. I just know that that, that was the one that used, used to be in there. Like it was a different color. I remember in um, Grand Marche they used to have the red one. I think that was the skim milk, and then the, the, the one with the blue carton I think the or blue the blue label or something. Had, that was like the two percent one. one. And but they had the light blue, I believe, and then like yeah, the dark blue and the dark blue is the two percent. The light one was the one percent or low fat or something or whatever other var- var- variation of right. milk they had. But what was the two percent for in two percent milk? I think two percent. Two percent fat. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like fat. whole milk is just milk with. So it's all fat, like. But <laughs> it's not just fat. Okay, look, let's 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 demonetize what milk actually is, right? Demonetize. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna leave it. I was gonna leave it. I was gonna. But yeah, so um, like, you know, milk, <laughs> milk, milk is a very weird liquid. I call milk no, no, now that I'm a vegan, I call milk liquid meat. It's legit. Like it has all the same. Things that meat has in it, but it's white. <laughs> so, so let's let's just go back and talk about milk for a second. Milk is not just <laughs> protein and thing; it's our calcium. It's also pus and blood. That's what they're selling us, but that's what we consume. It. That's the reason why our, when we drink milk, our body react that way. Question: yeah. Have you you watched the What the Hell documentary? Trust uh, me, he wa- I sure I've, you watched all of them. I've I've I watched sure. it. I've watched this it. This man been trying to yo. I was every week a, a different video in a group chat about but, yo. Are uh, you watch this? I choose to remain ignorant. But the thing is, the thing is, like I, I 
Bef- I, I did all this before that documentary come out. The documentary mm. come out, it was just like a reinforcement, you know? Mm. But this industry, like, this food industry is so smart and fucking corrupt. Like, they, they're doing... Ev- like, right now, they're in panic mode because there's, there's, there's a trend. Like, there's a trend. And they ain't liking it. Like, mm-hmm. even in Albertine right now, when you go into the, the Albertine here, the, the cow milk they, they, is all the way at the bottom now. No? When you walk in, you see on top, you see Alpro, you see almond milk, you see soya yeah, milk. If, if any of you it's interesting, it was interesting to watch that change happen, though, you know. Like, from, from, from living here, seeing the way that the Albertine used to be, so I can't remember yo, the the um the vegan product section yo, I was, was so smart. No, mm-hmm. like not, not even talking about the almond milk and stuff, like just the fake meat type of thing. Yeah, like, it was that like section all the way in the bottom. No, it's yeah. like a whole shelf yeah, thing they got dedicated yeah. to just fake meat, like compared to a year ago or whatever. It's like and and <laughs> when you look at it, even like when you go into Albertine and you go to get some, like in my case, I get some almond milk. Mm. Sometimes they don't have almond milk. It's yeah, yeah. it's sold out. And then you look in the bottom. I don't no, see that, that, like that, the that, milk section because, is just that's because of the gym. Yeah, the, the gym does buy all the almond milk. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would know. Like, I'm just yeah. They, they just have like some stash out there. Uh, like, probably. Okay, oh, well, oh. well, then that, that that makes sense. Well, yeah. if you if you ever run out, you can always go ask. But, <laughs> like, no, like, no, but I so usually <laughs> I make sure that I have at least like. There's always two cartons yeah, of almond milk. Like if one runs I out, one I out. buy the other one immediately. Yeah, I got. But I just, I just do a lot of French toast and them kind of ones mm. in the morning. So I just use, you know, my almond milk oh. and like protein shakes. And I'm no, I just use almond milk for everything that I used to use milk for. Yeah, yeah. Like, I no, no, I, re- I legit replace it for everything. <laughs> like if I make, I had cereal with it yet though. You're good. I, that you, I mean, that's why I just do on a regular. I, I had cereal and I had cereal. That's the only thing I ain't really think about. Yeah, but mostly crisply with, with almond milk. Oh, yeah, 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 yo, give me a book for that. That's my right there on the shelf. That's my right, 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 regular right. breakfast. Got, okay, speak, okay, since we are on the more food thing, I chose to throw a little protein powder in that. Like, if you just get the regular crisply and thing, yeah. the normally protein powder have a flavor, chocolate or whatever, mm-hmm. throw that over it. Your almond milk, you're good to go. I'm, I'm, I, might, I might indulge in that one thing. Healthy breakfast, same protein, daily protein intake and thing. Since we on the whole food food vibe give us give give the people a little give us give us something a quick a quick vegan meal something something people could think of quick so people could start off quick with oh, trying to get if, yeah. okay <laughs> or, 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 no, <laughs> other than just bush that's that's, that's uh <laughs> look other than just bush look, when you talk about when you talk about a vegan breakfast like what i what i eat in the morning it depends on my mood um sometimes i make vegan pancakes um okay, when, you the of, when you look at the ingredients when you look at the ingredient of pancakes take it's out milk it's and eggs. just take out milk and eggs yeah, yeah, you don't need eggs egg. to make hmm? a pancake Huh? And that was a take out milk. Yeah, yeah. you don't need you don't need eggs to make a pancake. I make Banana. I use Yeah. There is there's so many different things you could make a pancake with. I usually when I when I wake up in the morning, my go to is um oatmeal. But then I don't make just oatmeal. I make oatmeal with strawberries, apples, um I put cinnamon on it. Depends on my mood. There's so many different um toppings you could put on the oatmeal to yeah. change the consistency and the taste. Um, and in terms of when I put sh- when I use sugar on it, I don't use regular white sugar because I try not to use processed products anymore. So I try to just stay as whole as possible. Brown sugar. So brown sugar or um. I think that's that would be my um, next small step. Canadian um. Brown sugar. What's it called again? Syrup, to vegan, maple syrup. It's just healthy. No, I yeah. mean, no, I, I not, I not trying to go vegan. <laughs> I just trying to go do healthier. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like there's, there's like a lot of different products. Like the one, the one, the one advice I would tell a lot of people is try not to buy like processed foods, like processed anything, not yeah, even processed yeah. vegan products. That's, like, another, look, that's another question I was saying. Was if somebody wanted, if somebody would listen to this, wanted to hear. That's okay. Wanted to hear, um, not wanted to hear. Wanted to take small steps into be doing this whole vegan thing. What What would you recommend? Be like the first steps. Because obviously you started with cheese, but you were saying before that's some of the hardest things. Started for with milk. Yeah, I mean, milk started, um, started with milk. Dairy. Like, yeah, dairy. yeah, you started with dairy, but like you yeah, had said before, that's one of the hardest ones to start off with. So, what would I, you recommend? I would still recommend the same thing that I did. Why? Because cheese. Look, you know, cheese has has a compound in it called queso, morphine, casein. Oh, it's also in milk. Casein mm. I mean, I sounds a lot some... like morphine, right? A little bit. Um, it, it affects the body in the same way, but it's only like let's no, say if it? morphine if morphine is five grams, casein is zero point five grams. Um, but what casein does is similar to what morphine does in the body, so it's it's very addictive. Um. 
and it's also in milk. Look, when when a calf a calf drinks milk from from its mother, Bloody they nice have to make they have to make yeah yeah mm. they have to have something that milk keeps the cow dying. coming back to the milk. That's the job of the casein. The casein is so like the nic- addictive is, property of is the, the milk. Nicotine, is the nicotine in the, in the thing. So that the calf keeps going back to the milk. It's important for the calf to grow so it knows, yo, this this is good. I need more. I need more to grow. So that's the casein. But the problem is, usually in milk, the casein is very low in consistency because it's not, fo- it's not concentrated. But cheese is concentrated milk. So the amount of casein in cheese is way higher than the amount of casein in a regular glass of milk. Mm-hmm. So that's why cheese is so addictive, because it has morphine-like properties. I didn't know that. That makes sense. I mean, I didn't know this is similar things about sugar as well. Like <clears throat> sugar being a drug, sugar having addictive mm-hmm. qualities and stuff like that. I mean, I'll, obviously, it, like, it's <laughs> part of it. Like part of the reason <coughs> people consume so much sugar and all of it is like this part of it is we like it and then the other part mm-hmm. is just this kind of dependency that we don't even necessarily realize is mm-hmm. there because it's in so much products and in all kind of um different names and stuff, whether it's high fructose corn syrup or this other name and mm-hmm. whatever things is all different forms of sugars in some way. And that's why like And that's what you're saying about processed food and stuff like that. The chance of there being all of these type of Addictive extra sugars properties. and stuff. Okay, so now okay, so cool. So we went back first. Give me give me a quick lunch and a quick dinner. Um Something so my go to could, could my go to like together. Okay, like I just said, breakfast usually just oatmeal with fruits. Um when we go to dinner, um You want to skip lunch? No lunch. Oh, when it comes lunch. to lunch, um it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I have a salad with beans or um just a small wrap. Depends on my mood. Like, there's so much options. Um, it I doesn't saw, really. I just saw a, a, a um, video going on on my timeline recently, where there's you know comparison with beef and black beans and showing them all the protein yeah, content and that. stuff I like. Was seeing that. I didn't. In, I didn't click on it. In a hundred grams of black beans versus a hundred grams of beef and stuff. All of those things that help show like the more reasons to go vegan and stuff because like, you don't have to eat meat to get protein and stuff like they would say and stuff. I mean, there's lots of alternatives or other places where you could get mm. the same protein and from different nuts Arguably and even more. And different things. I have <laughs> never met a person in the world. Like, I always get this question, right? Like, yo, you're vegan. Like, how do you get your po- protein? Have you ever met someone in the world that has no protein? <laughs> No, it's one of the rare. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard someone like they have a protein deficiency? deficiency? No. Like it's one. Of, it's really one of the rarest things. The amount of like humans, most of us, I would say, we eat more protein daily than we need. Than we need. Yeah. Like our daily requirement, or the daily amount that we our bodies could actually like <clears throat> consume, and so especially mm-hmm. if you in training, if you in weightlifting and stuff like that, to be causing your muscles to need a little bit extra, or whatever for the um the recovery process and stuff. If you just an average person in their daily diet, you probably get more than enough protein. Yeah, like the funny thing especially is, like the when way, people like, eat of of chicken rice, like the kind of typical Caribbean meal of chicken rice, a little bit. Oh, I know Caribbean people. Like we definitely protein. There's, <laughs> there's, the the thing is, like the funny thing is, like before before people think about going vegan or whatever, they never talk about where they get proteins or their vitamins. Now they're gonna eat plants, which keep in mind, right? The strongest animals like on gorilla our planet are gorilla elephants and they only eat plants. And now you're gonna ask <laughs> you're going to eat what these animals eat and then you're gonna ask like where you gonna get your protein from that come on guys. Let's, let's I, I, you know, I don't I don't I I personally I can't see myself doing it. I and love I, something like a steak and oxtail too much though. I understand. I, I, like I love yeah. I did the vegan thing for a while. That's why I know some of the information yeah. that I know in thing. Like I did it for a while. It just didn't last because to me it's like it's literally just as simple as for me. I I didn't enjoy the fact that I had to relearn in entirely how to cook certain things. Yeah, <laughs> and, that and that's that's that's, 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 that's a, a, especially when it comes to like the type of foods that I like to eat and the things that I personally enjoy is like okay, so I can't eat this, I can't eat this, I can't eat this. Now we gotta find ways to substitute. Like I tried vegan cheese and that's not real cheese. Maybe there's a different alternative that actually tastes like cheese and. Would melt and stuff like that, not like what the, <laughs> there, there is. Like, there there is. is. <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, like, I think 
especially for me like it's been a year now that i haven't had any cheese or milk products whatsoever mm-hmm. and f- you have to have you have to have that period of letting your palate your 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 taste palate change because mm. once you're at that point then when something kind of tastes like cheese it tastes like cheese but if you if you don't give your your mouth the time to like I mean your time. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I understand I, what you're saying. But I, I, like, I can't, I can't see it's it. It's kind of random, but like because I, I, I once tried um non fluoride toothpaste. It's the weirdest thing you'll ever do if you ever try it. Baking soda. Yeah, yeah. You never had a, the the just the plain out Arm and Hammer baking soda toothpaste. Nah. Okay, yeah. That that. Well, those one. Okay, I had it before maybe because my father was a little extra mm. paranoid and that whole fluoride conspiracy mm. thing. So he had like. Get the whole baking soda to paste, but it's it's really odd. But for a while, I was concerned about the calcification of my pineal gland and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this fluoride, this non fluoride having to paste, and the taste of it mm-hmm. was is initially so terrible and such a weird transition. But after a while of having it, it's like, yeah, okay, not, this is just what toothpaste yeah. tastes yeah. like. Uh, but that's another thing. Like, I don't know if um if I ever tried this, but it does really work. And this is from somebody who. Had a lot of the pro- those kind of problems because we were talking about um, teeth and eating too much sweets and, and stuff thing, like that. Though, I will say it's a little weird about non fluoride toothpaste that had me kind of asking, like, maybe there is something to this calcification of the pineal gland, or maybe not that specifically, but mm. to the whole, like, is fluoride really good for you thing? Listen, not- I just found it weird that the non fluoridated toothpaste is not on shelves. Like, you li- you have to ask for it. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't even know it exists, know that it's an option. Because like you have we, to we, ask for the people. We've been taught that fluoride was supposed to be good and it was and supposed to be good. And then to say, like, in certain small yeah. amounts or certain things, it helps it's, your teeth and all bad, of these but, things but and whatever. No, the amount we put it's it on the market, the toothpaste. man. Like, you have to, like, these, these corporations invested so much money in these products, right? Mm-hmm. They want a return in their investment. But that's the shit. But so, I- when it comes to like doing studies, like there's you have a bunch of studies that conflict in studies. Like they want confliction. They don't want a uh, accurate like because they, they don't statement. want they don't, yeah, exactly. They don't want it to be a hundred percent confirmed. They be like, okay, yeah, it could be this, I, but I maybe say it could be this so too. Much of that to me is more of is. I would say almost more the issue is the bias in research and stuff like that. Because just because it's scientists doesn't mean it's 100% data, it's 100% trustable and thing. Because still, people who are analyzing and coming, trying to, like, looking at the data, interpreting it, seeing what it is, drawing the conclusion out of that, (coughs) and picking and choosing or deciding what maybe to present and thing. And people have biases depending on, let's say I'm a a dentist or whatever, and I'm doing certain research regarding teeth health and stuff like that. But I'm being paid by certain people and thing, like, depending on. Mm-hmm. Who it is paying you to fund this research that you're going out? You know, it may not be the yeah, most trustworthy yeah. thing. I I don't know, but it's with, with that whole thing is is re, especially with the vegan and or the whole floor. I think is you really you have to have that willpower because like we have, we, seen, we can get accustomed to anything. Like when you see envi- environmental studies published by Exxon Mobil and yeah, all of these yeah. oil companies it, and it stuff, it's like really yeah, it is, yeah, yeah it's making you want to be disregarded. <laughs> but that's why they they they're publishing it because they know. Look. The oil they industry know the outcome. The they it's know like the outcome of what that study is going to be. So they they're making sure that what that they outcome a, is is a, a good to, yeah, yeah it's a good outcome for their bottom line. I don't know, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's you could get I, it's re, I don't know. I really find it willpower because like I was saying before previously, like the whole thing with, with with um eating too much sweets and and um for instance cavities. If you use raw um 100 coconut oil hmm. before you brush your teeth. Um, just as like to rinse for maybe like ten minutes, like it is coming like a jelly type something. Mm. If you leave that melt in your mouth before you brush your teeth, it does take out and like rinse your mouth and things like that. It does take out the bacteria which the cause um the cavities. Mm. So if you use that, it does help. But I mean, at the beginning, like I had to, my mother tell me about it. I was um avoiding it for a while. They want to do it because yeah, you know, I think one of those things. Yeah, well, my mother know, you know, you know, one of those kind of things. But then actually, the pain was so bad. I was like, screw it. Anything, anything could help, and it actually worked. But why I bring that up is because the first couple of times I had that thing in my mouth, it was like, yo, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. And I go to like ten seconds, and I would almost feel like I want to vomit. Mm-hmm. But like after do, after doing it, like actually pushing through, like yo, no, I need to do this. I have to do it. This is actually good for me. Then after now, it's like what like is is normal. Like well, what was bitching yeah. about? You have to I, when it comes to be. I think is. From the whole veganism and then back to the whole thing, you like with you and the whole floor and two pairs, you have to push yourself through that beginning fa- beginning phase, beginning phase, 
for it to be to for it to become normal. But, but it's not to say it won't, be, but it won't ever happen. As a door or another thing as to uh that kinda hindered me from keeping or sticking with it is like why am I doing this? Like what is your real reason? Because I feel but like was it me, not was it not because of your penal gland? That was the fluoride. No, that was the fluoride. Stuff. Oh, so okay, after that's a while, okay, I realized, you know, I'm not worried about this nonsense. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know if my pineal gland exists or what's going on with it. I mean, it would be fun if it was real and I could do all the stuff that people say the pineal gland is supposed to help and be responsible for with ESP and all kind of different extra sen- and like extra awareness. Like, yeah, we never really know. But I've, 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 I've but never I, heard I've of had... this topic, but <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this problem. Like, Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of that problem. Yeah. This is non problems that I am looking to be first to extra problem. stuff about. Like, not even first world no more. That's like first spiritual. Uh, no, that's I mean, if you happen to be looking into the third eye and all of where it come from, like you might come across that stuff, that the concept in yoga and certain meditation and so what they talk about Kundalini energy and chakras and all of these mm-hmm. things and like. During looking into all of these things and me being really um, interested in the topics and concepts and stuff like that, that was my reason for doing it. Then I realized, like, I'm just being super extra about stuff. And I'm like, you know <laughs> what, least... I'll just buy my regular toothpaste where I don't need to ask and go behind the counter and stuff to get it. I can just pick it up but all you, I want. But you see, that's, that's another like, thing. I think that's another problem people have with the whole veganism is because they're either too lazy to go and search for the extra knowledge or like where to go buy the replacements or that was another thing too at the time like there was one place that was selling the vegan cheese exactly. and I was like I'm not making this journey to this one shop to find this place like at the yeah. time they may probably might have been some others or whatever but when I was doing it I was like I'm not going to ever come back to this store like the trip that I had to get there I'm like this is so know, out of my way you know the thing is like for me mm. like my, my journey into becoming vegan it was just fun for me like it was not, there was not one time for me to like, shit, I can't eat this. It was like, no, I want to eat this. Okay, how can I make this? I guess the perspective. That was that was my whole like. I love cooking. Like that's my my favorite yeah, activity. Very clear distinction oh, yeah, yeah, between you yeah. and me right now. <laughs> yeah, I love cooking. So for I'm me, fine with eating the same thing every day for quite. If I figure, okay, I like these meals. This yeah, is what I stick to. As simple, yeah, as simple. So like, possible. yes, like yesterday I made um, b- chili bean chili. Usually I would throw like. Back in the day, I would throw some pigtail or something in there. Mm. But I made the same thing. It tastes exactly the same. But <coughs> now instead of instead of throwing pigtails, what I do is I buy um aubergine, mm. cut it up. Eggplant. Yeah. Throw uh, a decent amount of salt on top of it with some um, See, like, like eggplant, eggplant. maple syrup on it. Throw that in the oven. It caramelizes and becomes hard. And it gets like that sweet, salty flavor of the pigtail. I recently saw a video where that they was making bacon. They was making bacon out of like a similar kind of process of what you described. I don't remember if it was eggplant, but like some process of like they cut it into strips and thing and um, put something over it, put it in the oven and thing. And it basically was supposedly to be like an alternative to bacon type of thing. But... <laughs> There's lots of those things I see them, and to me, it's like, yo, this is too much work for food. I know if I, I, I know. <laughs> it's not there's, there's, but, that, but that is, that is, that is like, like you say, you have it's reprogramming easy... all of your daily habits. And that's, for that's example, what, it is. what do you stock in your house? Like, the, the, I feel like that's where it starts. The type of things that you're accustomed to just putting in your house when you go grocery, the things that you pick, would pick up and buy just to restock without even thinking about, like, God, as many times I know my house empty and I don't even, not even thinking about, okay, what does my house need or whatever. I'm not thinking about, okay, what's the new things that I can try out? It's like, and no chicken, and no rice, and no vegetables. You know, the I combine easy, the, tr- the three of them, and I have a meal. The, e- the easiest, like, like, if you want to be, um, let's call this lazy vegan, hmm. the easiest things you need to just buy off the stores, like, just to, <laughs> that's so you know you have, like, the main things in your house. Beans, rice, legumes. Um, wait, wait, legumes is what? Another type of bean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, have I those at home. Can't me legumes is like the species it's like the, yeah, it's like, it's like the whole umbrella term yeah, yeah, of for beans. beans and peas and all yeah. of those type of things. Oh, okay, oh, okay, so okay, 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 okay. Just okay. if you have that already in your house, like just make sure you have that. And let's say you want to have some lettuce, you just say, okay, today I'm having, I'm having lettuce. I'm buying a bag of lettuce. Mm. Um, just right. to add into the experience, like you want curry, you just buy potatoes. Like with curry like- powder, you make curry. Po- 
potato curry. Like hmm. it's it's that's like the easiest way. Like if you want to have like more um diverse diverse uh, variety. variety or just something more um technical in hmm. terms of food, making something more technical, then you're going to have to put a little bit more time into it. Like it's that's that's with anything. Like if you're making that's, pasta sauce from scratch, that you know, is true. Like, the one thing I do definitely need to get up on is um vegan lasagna. Kind of like I had vegetarian lasagna that was good, but I want a vegan lasagna because I, I, I love lasagna. It's been a minute since I had lasagna, and I just ain't make it in a while because I feel like it's, I usually would rather do that if there's two people eating. And you know, since the young lady can't eat it, I'm like, or you could just ain't no point in me you, buying a lasagna. You could just, I'm making lasagna. Do lasagna? Yeah, you can say like you said a vegan vegan lasagna. That's why do I'm with the cheese. The vegan yeah. lasagna. That makes it no okay. But, but we I mean, need cheese that melts so. before before. <laughs> I go, yeah, I go hook you up with that. Hey, we, we gotta, gotta we gotta, we gotta, yeah, we gotta vegan connect though. <laughs> but before, before we wrap up, um, because you know we've been going here for for hour yeah. and fifteen minutes now. Well, being that this is the link up, and we like to put things more on a Caribbean perspective. Well, how you see veganism in the Caribbean? You, um, you, especially you being from Aruba, and you know. So let's talk about Aruba for a second. In Aruba right now, um, Aruba has been has had this trend of going very like. Wanting to be more healthy, mm-hmm. they even build a park specialized so that people, like people in their thirties and forties, even younger people, but it was aimed towards the older generation to run and be more healthier. Like, mm-hmm. like that's the trend in Aruba right now. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, the only vegan place I can think of that just opened recently was this plant-based pizzeria. Mm-hmm. So they have okay. a pizzeria that has the cheese that melts and all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for you, you can't get they got they got melting cheese, okay? But it's it's all plant based. Um, and in in um um, the only thing the only thing about the Caribbean in general is like it depends on where you, where you're getting your fruits from, your fruits and vegetables from. Mm-hmm. Um, will decide how easy or hard it is to become vegan. Like in Aruba right now, vegetables are kind of expensive. I don't know how how the vibe is. Same, 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 same. We have to we have to import them. Yeah, yeah, but that's a Caribbean thing in general. Yeah, but see, but that's the thing. You, do you see because of the fact that we don't necessarily? I mean, according to me, most of the Caribbean islands they don't necessarily produce something or plant. Maybe the bigger Some ones like like Antigua, like yeah, Antigua, yeah, the big or ones. Like if you go to yeah. Dominica, Dominica. I remember last time I was there. Okay, was yeah, many Dom- many years ago, it was yeah. like just rows and rows of bananas. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Like the bigger ones, Dominica, them mm. them ones. I mean, I know Jamaica just do like sugar canes and them mm. kind of ones too. But I mean, like not necessarily on a big scale. So mm. like seeing that we we just have to import most of our vegetables and most of like the vegan it's it a quote unquote kind of like vegan thing yeah. yeah but is it how, how do you see that going will it continue do you say the thing is going to continue yeah, the, like, the, like the trend like it's it's already I'm looking at it like let's say 50 years from now I feel like it's going to be the majority this is what's going this is what I think is going to happen this is my hypothesis um, one, one more time your what hypothesis <laughs> <laughs> You know what the man is saying. You know, the, you know what the man is trying to say. Hypothesis. I said it good now. Hypothesis, no. But this man. Ridiculous. Man. So unprofessional. Hey. What is your hypothesis? Don't worry about that guy. Uh, what going to happen is, like, children, like, if you, if you take a kid, right? Mm. Uh, a two-year-old or four-year-old, you put, you oh, put a chicken or you put an apple. In 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 the in the pen, <coughs> where, the, where, the, where the child is laying, he's most likely going to eat the apple and play with the chicken. He ain't gonna kill the chicken and eat the chicken. That's a fact. But you see, but that's the thing. No, but but what I want to try to say is, um, what's going to happen in terms of food knowledge, the uh, our kids and the future generations that are going to be growing up, this won't be ambiguous anymore. It won't be like we we growing up we had no idea where our food came from. We just know we had food and we eating the food. Yeah. But what I think okay, is going to happen is there's going to be a newer generation growing up, especially with the parents them growing up right now. Yeah. The newer generation and it's going to be legislation in schools telling people yo you have to educate your kids about food. You cannot 
not educate your food your kids about food i know there's definitely steps being taken towards yeah. that type of thing in different ways not necessarily that like okay you have to educate them about food but at least making sure that in schools and stuff like no, that they don't um, get vending machines have yeah. um, more healthy options yeah, but not I, just a bunch of sugary sodas like but i think he definitely we have man a, growing uh, up on buster i mean bus, yeah, like, a buster, buster, and buster and some and some yeah like, like but we were also, just drinking none but sodas. That's yeah, the regular thing. And we were also being taught, like, like right now, especially if this is happening in the States, mm. that means it's going to happen everywhere. They can't, right now, they can't say egg is healthy anymore. They're not allowed to. Carcinogens? It's carcinogen. It's carcinogen. Yeah. And, and, you and know, chicken for, is... For those of us who, who didn't pay attention to science class, ah, there you go. It's a cancer causing. They yeah. found that... There you go. Different things in... Um, just like bacon, the, the WHO, I do I think last year it was, I believe, or maybe the, the year before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the World Health Organization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, decided, they decided that bacon was a carcinogen. You pronouncing a word? <laughs> You don't even no. know fucking her. No, no, that, no, that's what it's talking about. Who? It's who? Um, no, but yeah, man. Like, there's there was a lot of information I wish I knew when I was younger, because hmm. I think that would have, especially if you're suffering from asthma or if you have some some type of disease. Like that information is good to know beforehand. Like we we growing we were growing up. Like, a lot of people don't know, like, what the cause of heart attack is, yeah? Everybody's, like, you're predisposed. You're genetically predisposed of having a heart attack. What the hell was that? I have no uh, idea. All right. <laughs> all right. I heard some strain sound. Why is it coming from somewhere? I, I wonder if that was an indication that we're going too long. Because that, that's the first time we ever hear that. <laughs> and I don't that know where it comes from. That was from nobody phone. <laughs> <laughs> nobody phone like that. Nothing. No, but, no. <laughs> no, but... But I think legit, like, it's going to, like, it. there's there's this trend. This trend is, it's slowly happening. I mean, if I can convince my mother to go vegan, and she's Surinamese, and she only like, know about eating meat and chicken and pom and all this kind of fuck. Like, I will say I had a little bit of advantage with us concerned because, like, my mother, she was always super health conscious. Because, like, in my family, like, diabetes and things, something that run in my family, and my grandfather had it. So from that, like, my mother was always like, yo, I ain't trying to get this. I ain't I staying far mm-hmm. from this. So she was always super, like, health conscious. No, but I, I definitely... She would buy brown bread and un- buy white bread just for <laughs> us because we'd be like, at the time, I don't want... Why are these nuts on the bread? Like... <laughs> That, that was my opinion and thing and like <laughs> white sugar for me and my brother and thing and she would be eating brown yeah. sugar basmati yeah. rice was always in those versus regular just white it's rice it's legit but we see he was at the age that you know our, our bodies could have take all that kind of crap yeah. and, and, and not suffer from it and that's, but that's I mean, a lot of things kind of little foundation for me so for me eating yeah. healthy was like a natural thing because I see my mother do it every day basically like the type of my mother would never eat the same food that we would eat no, morning she wake up like you she would eat like you like you would wake up and have some oats and thing with some different fruits and things my mother really like, i'm gonna lie my mother really really tried my mother really tried <laughs> with me like it was she was more she was more successful with like my older brothers mm. and sisters she really tried with me but i was so so picky with eating that it just used to be to a point my mother just to give me what i wanted just to shut me up <laughs> Or at least just to get me to eat, cause it was that bad. Mm. I was legit. Even like what vegetables and stuff like that. You ever mm. had? You never had? You know those children that used to have to like sit on the table and for like that wasn't hours. Me. Like, that was me. Vegetables. Vegetables. That like, was me. Okay, that, I, that was me with certain. I things. used to pay my cousin to eat my vegetables. I'll show you. <laughs> I yo, I used, I used to, I used to have my, I used to have my little side hustles in in like in middle school, high school, like yeah, but you know, I sell candies to, like in school and them mm. kind of one from the Chinese shop. But that same profit I get it, I used to save up like uh, at least five dollars a week put aside. And use that as my bribery money. Hmm. So when my cousin come over, that a vegetable, like, that a yeah, vegetable budget. Yeah, yeah, no. that, that a vegetable be like, yo, look at dollar. Look. You Take whole lot broccoli there for me. No? <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> you were, you were paying so that your cousin gets healthier. Yeah. <laughs> that's Maya. yo. That's a, that's, a, yo, that's a smooth I business for you. I used to be by that table for hours just because my mother was like you're not leaving from there until you eat everything and mine, I eat everything else. Rice gone, meat gone. I got a small like. 
one eighteenth of a plate of, of, of beans and, and, and oh god Brussels sprouts Jesus Christ okay, man. I, I love them things, hate them things, things with, a sprouts, with a passion with a passion and then my mother just stopped making sprouts. it I don't know if I've ever tasted Brussels, Brussels sprouts that was not you, something you, you in my household you ever had um it's my hug nasty it is that nasty but I think you think you were younger when you were younger your palate your palate changes when you grow up big man up to this day Brussels sprouts and eggplant them are two things you're not going to get me to eat no I am sorry I don't care how you make it I don't care who make it it could be God himself okay maybe the, maybe I went to a little too far with that one. <laughs> but <laughs> my, if my if I can say no for my mother making it I don't, I don't see no way how anybody else could get me to eat that Hmm. But that's just me being stubborn and ignorant. I, I admit that. But I just don't like. The, I don't like the taste and the texture of them things. Just. You see that? I, that's, I just, how, I, that's how I feel about fish. Like, but then they got different types of fish. They don't have no, different types of. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they are the same. Man. No, that. They yeah, no, same. that. Yeah. They got different types of fish. No, that. They don't they have different types of Brussels sprouts. Which fish does not smell like terrible? Fish. Yeah, also which smell like, fish smell does like fish. not smell terrible and look because the way it look on the plate? <laughs> My problem Bro. with fish was how is that it look too much like what it is? Like <laughs> if I eat this, yeah. 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 like yeah. chicken, chicken breast doesn't look like chicken. Chicken breast, like chicken. chicken you... breast, chicken breast just looks like meat. Because yeah. it's not you eating you eating the whole you are eating the whole chicken my with point. fish. You most of the time eating the no, whole thing. Even even Understand when you even, no, even when you eat the I whole chicken. This is why I never how this how, how does looking at a fried fish how is that appetizing? Mm. Like anytime I would see people got fried fish on the plate and be like yo this is so good after talking about yo, jacks and different yo, things. You know you know what friends said and had a good fried fish. No because you know, it smelled terrible. You know what always used to even get me even after it cook cake. Okay? It smell worse than sometimes. What the you hell? Know, you know what always used to get me? It's like when they just take the whole fish and they just plop it in oil. Yeah. And then you just see like the fish just looking at the you like, yo, bro, like, bro, are you going to okay, eat Okay, no, that, that's, that's a little ridiculous. But I mean, if you cut it, you clean it, you scale it. It still look like fish. If it's a fish fillet. But why, why it you look, want it look like chicken? Yes. No, 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 no. No, no, no. In the same when, way, like for me with frog legs, when for you example. Look, when you, you look, look at frog legs on a plate, I've never eaten it like really, like, but I've seen what it looks like and it looks too much like a frog's legs. <laughs> like, I could literally... But what, I could, wait, what else listen, do you want it to be? If I'm, if I'm eating my meat, I want to be fooled into not realizing <laughs> that this actually <laughs> came from an animal. Look, look, look I don't want you. Even, even, even when you eat a whole chicken, right? You look at a whole chicken and you look at a chicken. Does the whole chicken, the, the the fried chicken, the whole fried chicken look like a chicken? No, no. Well, a, f- a fried a fried fish. You think you cut off the head? The same it still look like a fucking fish. Cause it's a fish. Yeah, but but the chicken look like a chicken. No, no, no. The chicken look like a chicken, no, 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 chi- no, chicken, like chicken with all the head and with all feathers. Listen, exactly. Chi- but is the chicken still? Listen, fool me. This is what I'm saying. I want a little. De- I want a little more deception in my food. <laughs> I don't believe I hear in this I don't want today. to just be able to stare at the plate and tell, okay, this is clearly a fish. And like, so you no. don't want to know what you're eating? No. Like, you know what? Shrimp look a little more, it's a process. Like, not the thing. Like, I don't want to see certain people, the types of shrimp certain people eat are prawns or whatever. Like, be like, yo, that look too alive. Yeah. Why what? you eating that? Like the, like like the mean, shrimps with all the tentacles still yeah. on the side and thing. Now. I don't understand that. <laughs> it looked like it could move any moment. Are you weird, but I think that's, that's weird, why it's but... also, it was also very easy for me to go vegan, though. I, okay, maybe maybe because I, my uh, my parents and like not my parents, my mother and and my because of my um sister and their brother, their parents, they help. Their father is like a big chef, and he always mm. in the kitchen doing like different experiments with different things. Maybe mm. that's why I get more little cousin to like fish and those kind of ones. Even though yeah. I can't eat shellfish, so I kind of miss the I'm whole just, portion I'm there. just a, a rare person when it comes to Caribbean people because you don't find many people in the Caribbean that don't. I I. I I don't know any, but um, I can't. Ju- I re- when it comes to that, I can't judge you too much. I never had a whole mango. What? What? Yeah, like I never, I never take wow. a mango from a tree and eat a mango. Wow. You eat mango? No. You never eat mango before. Wow. Well, I probably had like when a I was mango sm- shake. When I was small, I, like my mother probably made me eat one. But like me as a per, like as my own individual that has like my own train of thought and stuff like that, I've never actually eaten like a whole mango. <laughs> wow. You had mango juice. 
Like I know what mango laughed, tastes laughed. like. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I know what mango tastes like. I'm but shocked. I've, I've never, I've never had like a whole yeah. like like a whole night. Like, like that part of the Caribbean, like typical Caribbean experience. I never had either. So I can't really judge it too much. The whole fish. Like thing. Your oh. reaction to him never eating a mango is like how I'd react to that girl who was like, you know, I don't know what Superman is. I've never heard of Superman, and I was just like. Really? That's pop, like, <laughs> the, 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 is that possible? Like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Like, I, I feel like fish make a little more sense than mango. You've, but you've like, seen mango, right? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, I have to. I have to know where the baseline <laughs> is. <laughs> I have to know where the baseline yes, is. Dog. I oh. know what a mango looks like. Oh, okay. I, 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 I even know what it tastes like. I've had stuff with mango in it. I just never had a, a whole, whole mango. mango. Oh, okay. I've never had. A, I, according to my knowledge, I never had watermelon either. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. even weirder. Like I've never, I've again me, I've my own sound mind and body. I've never said yeah, but you know, I'm going to try watermelon. Like, Bye. okay, okay, I, I can't say none. Yeah. I don't eat fish. I, like, I can't <laughs> say none. Yeah, I, I, I can say a lot actually, but I, Bye. I like fruits, fruits and, and vegetables was obviously never really my thing <laughs> growing up. So I, mean, I, I can't. You know, again, I can't judge you. You know, the mango you. thing is more understandable than the watermelon. If you if you started with you've never had no. a watermelon before, no. I would have react way. No. no, 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 no. You don't want to know why. You don't want to know. Especially, I mean, obviously, thing. I watermelon think, don't grow in the Caribbean. Yeah, just oh, like that. I was just going to say that exactly. No, 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 like everybody on Saint Martin, uh, many people have a mango tree in yeah, the backyard. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like so that, that that's a bit. That's where it, especially it becomes where more, you live. The, yeah, the, the, the exactly. yard right like, next to you on SM9. Next to uh, yeah, not a mango was next, falling in your in your <laughs> yard, and that's my aunt house. So <laughs> I mean, it's not uh, it's not to say it was a shortage or I didn't have access to it. I just playing out, just didn't like like the whole mess, and I don't know. You know, I, you know why? You know why I think watermelons are so associated with the Caribbean. It's no, because when it's so with black people, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm okay, cool. Yeah, but, yeah, black most people. I mean, yeah. like we we tend to differentiate ourselves. Mm. With but them, with the thing is, people. like watermelons are so refreshing. Like if you want something to quench your thirst, like I hear, you could I legit hear just people. eat watermelon. It's an interesting, it's an interesting food because like it's a I, snack. It has a little flavor, and, it has and exactly what you're saying, like yeah. you get hydrated yeah, and stuff out I mean it. I don't I don't doubt it I just I just personally never had like well I didn't go buy a watermelon or a mango did you just not and I never had that inclination so it's like yeah usually when he goes to the store he buys Hershey's yeah that's that, I mean everybody got a fix Yo, you know, usually that's... you just take one chocolate right <laughs> yeah. this man goes into the counter like this whole section of Hershey's when, it, when it's when it's done it's because of him he just takes he takes like five, six packets. No, he, he exaggerated. No, I don't take like three at a time. <laughs> and, it take, and it's legit take three at a time. It just, it just so why? happened that. Why? Why? What do you mean? Why, why, why are you not? taking three at a time? Because it's only 99 euros. I mean, 99 US cents. Uh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you buy the golden chocolate bars. Like, I'm looking really for, yeah, yeah. for the golden ticket. Yeah, yeah, no, euros. but this man, I think he just finishes three packs a day. Like it's like not his a, not version a, of not cigarette. A day, but every like two days or three days, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe. I mean, mm-hmm. it's bad, but it's not that bad. He exaggerated. It's uh, bad. Well, you know, but from it's... my perspective, the way I see him <laughs> eat sweets, I think maybe when I see him eating sweets, he's in his like low sugar period and he needs to bulk up. Because sometimes this man just pull him chocolate out of his pockets. Like, do you have some but, more but chocolate? Yeah, it's, it's, but yeah, I, 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 I've, I've had occasions where it's been a little bit ridiculous, but you know, it's, it's, it's okay. I, 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 I'm doing drugs. I, I'm, I'm killing people. You know, everybody have their, their vice. You I know? mean, yeah. you're doing KC though. No? I just don't get the sweet yeah, thing. but I just don't, I just don't <laughs> man, you just, you just had to go and bring that to a whole different something. Jesus Christ, uh, but. In, with that being said again you know we appreciate everybody um sticking to this extra long episode but you know i feel like it was a little bit informative so you know I feel we, like it, we it wasn't just know, we didn't even know a proper job of plugging this young man no but i mean we still giving him a chance you know well, well, what's the next upcoming thing that you have dj wise like what's the are there any upcoming gigs um right now the only or? the only thing scheduled i can't really talk about it yet but um if y'all heard about um, Aruba Day on the twenty mm-hmm. fifth of March, mm-hmm. there's something Denak big coming up in the yeah. Fe- yeah, big festival, man. Oh god. Okay, okay, okay. But so, yeah, that, so that coming up? That's September, or November. No, it's no, March. 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 Oh, wow. How are you? Wow. Yeah, no, yeah, I you're, think you're it's a man's you're, day. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, a man's yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. different. I, I, I can't understand. Different I can't island. Different island. Okay. This is our really first Arubian we had on the show, so I don't know. You're not accustomed to it. So that that that's the big thing coming up right now. There's also a party in the campus coming up, but I can't. Talk about that. I going yeah. to okay, you know okay. when when those details come out. I going to leave it be known. 
yeah. a little bit more thing. Because the thing um, is also the branding. Come, it's coming out. So everything is coming out by the end of this month. So, like, yeah, I can't really talk about it yet. It would we be it would be sacrilegious to talk about it right now. Oh God! And right. if, if people right. want to hit you up, for, yeah, that, that uh, if people want to hit you up for a video or something like. Or for parties or wherever they may just go, where, where just, they can find you. Just, just go on my pro- Instagram, Joel N Woods. It's just Joel N Woods. How you or, spell Joel? There's numerous ways to spell Joel. People yeah. might be confused. The Bible way. J O E L. J O E L. Okay then. Okay, that's English E for all my Dutch people listening. Yeah. All the Dutch people listening. This is English. We 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 spell it in English. This is not I. This is E. Yeah. You know, just just putting out there. Um. Yeah, man. Just go on Instagram. That's where most of the people follow me. That's where my promotions them come out most of the time. Okay then. And I had a personal question. Now it's just so how much you, you if I wanted you to shoot a video clip? Huh? How much the price are? Like what's the range? Generally it, speaking, it, it it depends. It's a bit, it depends on the budget. How much work the how much work it is for you? It 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 depends on the budget. Like if if you come in if you come in with a thousand euros and tell me you want to do a music video, I'm gonna tell you yo that thousand euros gonna cover just the camera. Mm-hmm. You know, you you need to have at least like four thousand yeah, for I, everything. If I you want a good f- music video, so you shouldn't proper, you shouldn't yeah, no, quality I, production. I know the fellow he does. I know the cameraman. Let's call him now. Who mm-hmm. he does thing with and is like the 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 hardware they are using for sure is legit. Yeah. It's like, like legit the, the quali- professional quality. The quality, quality you're getting, yeah. the quality you're getting is really it's it's. Like I think it, the, it the, matches the camera this man using is like a thirty five thousand dollar camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like so the it's, dragons. Yeah, it's it by I I don't know the terms and all that kind of thing, but I just know there's normally like there's industry standard in Hollywood production and yeah. like different it's, it's dragons, very, different Yeah, yeah it's very high there. equipment. So um I like the even prices even, of some even of those four thousand is low is low blowing it actually. Mm. Low, low budget. Low yeah. Mm. But Should I? I mean you need to have a, a, a appropriate budget to get a a good content like yeah, you can so come, if you come with something small then we go rent something small to do something yeah, small in other words mm-hmm. you get way paid for yeah true, okay true. anyway so mainly Instagram they can find you yeah that's where I I'm usually at I don't really go on Facebook anymore I feel like mm-hmm. Facebook's dying anyway um, in terms of in, ter- in terms of promotions with pages I think it's become too too crowded Instagram you could be a little bit more personal I like mm-hmm. that Chill out, and then also like, and that's another thing, yeah. and then unnecessary stuff. Um, yeah. So with, with, with that being said, again, you know, we like to thank the homie Woods for coming through, um, and we like to thank everybody else for sticking to us again. With I mean, sticking with us yes, for through this this, this extra long episode. But like we said before, it feels a little bit informative. You know, we get some nice veganism. Yeah, we, they don't want they don't want to end the conversation too soon before we actually yeah, learn something. Yeah. So um, again. If you leave, if you like the episode, you know, again, like always, leave us know what you think. Give us a comment. Hit hit us up personally by our individual social, um, media social medias, or hit us hit us up on the link book Facebook. Um, the link up in the link book. The link up Facebook <laughs> and the link up um Instagram. If you have anybody else you'd like us to interview or have a conversation with, let us know again either personally or via the link up social media. Um, any topics you would like, same thing. Hit us up. And yeah, with that, we'll see you the next time we link up. <laughs> Blessings. None. <laughs>